Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, if you're not into cryptocurrencies, just go ahead and skip this one. Uh, I think you should watch it because I think you're going to find it to be very informative and very interesting. But if you're not interested, just go ahead and tune out. Uh, the reason I'm doing this on the member site, uh, I think all of you know that I have the domain, the Bitcoin channel dot com. Uh, had that for a long time, got into Bitcoins back in 2011. And there's a lot that's happened. My initial decision regarding Bitcoin was that I was going to get into this technology, we'll call it, as a commentator. Simply because the danger, I read the white paper early, I read about it, as soon as I heard about it, I knew what it was. And it is beyond description amazing. Um, the technology, if you understand cryptography and what, what this represents. But uh, I decided at that time to get in as a, a uh, member of the press more than anything else, and that was because of the risks. Not only the risks of prosecution from, at the time, it, there was no way to know how the government was going to deal with this new thing, which I, if you look at my earlier videos, you can look on the bitcoinchannel.com. Actually, I'm covered in Wikipedia because I covered the flash crash at Mt. Gox and caught that live. And uh, if you look at the videos on my channel, you'll understand why I got into it and the reasons for it. There's so many reasons I can't even go into it. Um, an alternative currency, the ability to defeat capital controls. Um, there are so many reasons. And I'm going to show you another reason here that is just absolutely staggering when you understand the implications of it. But now, again, the reason why I'm bringing this to the members and not on that BitcoinChannel.com uh, YouTube site and blog, which I really haven't updated for the longest time, and that's because I've been pretty much out of the game for a very long time. Um, that was based on market some market analysis and it was also based on uh, my opinions about uh, what's going to happen with it, and I just wasn't sure. I also experienced a, a very high level of hacks, had a number of trading accounts get hacked, but uh, and exchanges get hacked. I mean, this this is a new technology, and the the number of hacks is absolutely tremendous. It's actually a very good thing, and I'm not even going to tell you how much money I've lost from hacks and, and exchanges that go bankrupt and things like that. Um, but to me, that doesn't matter at all. It really doesn't matter at all. For, for me, it's the equivalent of starting a business when the Gutenberg Press came out and you decided to be someone who is a publisher or someone who uh, is a printer or something like that. Um, there are people who came and went. There are people who went bankrupt. There were people who became successful. Uh, there were people who bet wrong. I mean, it happened in every way you can imagine. Nevertheless, this invention changed the world. And the reason why it changed the world was that it allowed for the Bible to be printed in the language of the common man. The common man was able to read the Bible and interpret it for himself, which is obviously the way it was intended from the beginning, and saw that most of the church structures, we're going to not name any names here, I don't want to get into that controversy, but uh, the church structures at the time, uh, they were very opposed to this happening. Hold on, I've got a video playing, so I've got to stop that here real quick. So, Bitcoin is similar to the Gutenberg Press in that it does a lot of things. It frees up the individual to trade with another individual. And we'll see here with what I'm going to cover here with the coin that I'm now looking into very heavily. And again, this is why I want to share this with the members. Um, it's revolutionary. So I want to start with the story. That's the one we just quieted. And that is about this kick-ass torrents uh, domain seizure. Now, I don't know how many of you use torrents, but a torrent is just a technology. It's uh, nothing different than DNS, email, 
it's it, it's just a thing. It, it's something that allows people to share files between computers. So if I have a file on my computer and you want that file, this technology allows us to share it. And uh, the way the technology works is that usually multiple people have the same file on their computers and it is uh, shared using the same name in the in this torrent system and then you can download it from multiple people at the same time so for those of you who aren't familiar with BitTorrent um, it was a precursor to Bitcoin it is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, uh, system hold on I've got a battery going low here um, it's a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer system and it, I think we just lost power. Okay, I'll keep going. Um, and it allows people to share files. So it's come under tremendous attack from the government. And of course, the government represents the corporate interests, and the corporate interests uh, pretty much are the guys who rule everything. Um, so this story is, you can see, it's April 30th. Uh, Kickass Torrent's new domain name has been seized. The Pirate Bay looks to follow pending an upcoming court decision. As we recently reported, Kickass Torrents recently switched domains to a location in the Isle of Man, a self-governing island between the Irish Sea and England and Ireland. Kickass Torrents announced the domain change was part of their routine switching of domains that occurs periodically and for no other re reasons. Now, however, Kickass Torrents has switched domains again to a Costa Rican location after its new island of domain, uh, Isle of Man domain was seized. The site reached out to Tech Times stating, quote, the Isle of Man domain has been seized. We will be moving to cat.cr shortly on the kickass.to domain. Until then, apologies for the inconvenience. We can confirm that the cat.cr domain is now currently up and running. The site fell, vic fell victim to the Isle of Man's zero tolerance policy on copyrights. And again, this is not what this is about because a large number of the files that are transferred between individuals that uh, on, the, on, on the torrent networks is are not copyright, they're not copywritten. They're actually, um, uh, Linux files and other things like that. So this is a this is a distribution system. It has nothing to do with copyrights. But the reason why it's being attacked by these people is that it gives people the ability who want to trade things uh, with copyrights. They have that ability. It's no different than a briefcase. Um, you can carry uh, cash in a briefcase. You can carry cocaine in a briefcase. You can carry gifts in a briefcase or you can carry your business papers in a briefcase. Uh, what is the crime of a briefcase? Well, there's no crime. There's no, it's just a neutral thing. But again, the technology of being able to transfer files between computers has got the people who create these copywritten uh, works absolutely terrified because people can transfer whatever files they have with other people they can make a copy of it and I'm not going to go into the long explanation of why I don't buy into the copyright law uh, I'm not I'm not saying that I violate that law but I am saying that I don't believe that that law is valid in that the law is uh, that making a copy is not stealing something but but again these very powerful interests are trying to shut down these sites that allow people to share this information again they're not trying to shut down people who are sharing the information because that would take an individualized effort they'd have to go after every person that's out there to shut them down and that they're not going to do that so they're going to go after the libraries we'll call them of information where people can find out about other people that have these files that's what these torrent tracker sites are and that's where they're trying to shut them down so they're jumping jurisdictions and uh uh, it's a constant battle. Of course, the governments, and it, it's not the governments, it's really the corporations, but the corporations using the governments to try to shut down uh, file sharing information. Uh, this is a continual battle. Now, what is the relationship between this and cryptocurrencies? I'm going to show you. So, uh, this is my Florin coin wallet. Now, if you saw the post I put on the member site, um, I tried to point out that I'm looking at Florin coin now. 
Now, before I just had a battery alert over here, I'm running another computer. Um, before I get a shutdown here, um, I'm going to show you a transaction. So I'm sitting over here at another computer and I'm about to send 100 Florin coins to this wallet. You can see on this wallet uh, that I have sent 100 coins, then 100 coins back, then 100 coins again. So I'm going to go ahead and send 100 coins now and click OK on this computer. Okay, and I just sent 100 coins. Do you see that flash up there? Okay, that's an incoming transaction. I just clicked on another computer to send 100 flooring coins to this computer, and you can see uh, it was instantaneous. Um, that's how fast that transaction was recognized in the system. Now, this coin, Florin coin, has a different aspect to it than Bitcoin has. Uh, this coin was copied off of Bitcoin, but it has a message field. And that's very important because there are people coming up with a project now called Alexandria Project. Now, this project allows the message field. You have to, okay, you can see we just got confirmed. Those 100 coins are there. That's how fast that transaction occurred. Now, I'm going to show you the Florin coin blockchain. I'm sorry if this is confusing. Uh, there's just uh, I'm I'm going so fast here. So here's the uh, original site, florincoin.org. Now uh, the coin has messages attached to it. You can see they have this messages thing. Um, but I'm going to show you when you go over here to stats. You can see this is the blockchain. Now again. If you haven't tuned out and you're not interested, I mean, if you tuned out, you're not watching, but people who are not, who are still watching, who are not into cryptocurrencies, a lot of this stuff is going to fly by. you. You're probably going to have to watch it multiple times, but I have to go fast because there's so much information that has to be covered. Uh, it's hard to explain it all, but this is a block explorer. What a block explorer does is it looks at every transaction that's occurred in the blockchain of that particular cryptocurrency. Now, when I sent those 100 back and forth here from wallet to wallet, this wallet is on this computer, that wallet is on my laptop. You can see that I actually labeled it laptop. Um, uh, you can look at the message that was added by clicking view recent messages. So you can see this coin is really not even in use right now, but the promise is so great. I can't believe it. So you can see here are the, these are public messages that are, uh, that exist for all time because they're, they're locked in this blockchain. So you can see uh, when I sent from this computer initially, it says greetings members. The next message says greetings members, then back at yet. Now this count the time message, this was actually that hundred Florin coin that I sent from one computer to the other. And uh, the message attached was count the time. The time was literally instantaneous. Um, I didn't know it would go that fast, but it, it went that fast. And uh, so, and another thing is, if you look at the cost, I've been sending this 100 back and forth between these two computers. There is no cost. Some people talk about minimal transaction time. Now, the, the value of a Florin coin right now is a fraction of a cent but so let's connect this together here and then talk about the market um, so before i do that i want to show you something on security now one of the one of the reasons why i got out of the cryptocurrency game was that the sorry about the blips in that's one of the web pages i have i'm going to go ahead and kill that kick-ass site So one of the reasons I had a problem with continuing in cryptocurrencies at the stage it was at was I didn't know how many exchanges were going to go bankrupt, and that was a large number. Um, I didn't know how many ac accounts of mine were going to be hacked. <laughs> that was a large number. Uh, I didn't know how security was going to work itself out. So th there were a lot of things where I just had to wait and let themselves work themselves out. That's, that's how it works. 
um, you have to let an idea have time to see if it's going to be legit. Now, this authentication method, this is Google Authenticator. This is just a two-factor authentication. I actually have like three or four different methods of two-factor authentication. And probably, actually, I'm running now three-factor authentication on, on these wallets. What that does is it links it to... A, this is actually a screenshot from someone's phone, but I have it on a tablet. And uh, you can see these little window times. This, re, this is a password that re-enables itself every certain amount of time. It's just like an RSA encryption key uh, used in corporate, uh, corporate America every day for all these people who work for these big corporations. It's just another way of authenticating who you are. So I'm running this and another factor email authentication. Whenever I send these back and forth, I have to do a lot of authentication. Now, a lot of people would say, well, that's just that 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 shows you that there's something wrong with it. No, it actually doesn't. It shows you the opposite. It shows you how valuable these cryptocurrencies are. The fact that there is so much authentication required to protect these cryptocurrencies and that Bitcoin still has a value of over $200, that means that all of these hackers want to get their hands on these Bitcoins because they know they're valuable. If Bitcoin was not valuable, they would not be doing these hacks. So the, the advancement in security that Bitcoin has caused is unbelievable. Now, to take it into the real world, I have purchased... Uh, silver from Atmex, Provident Metals, Gainesville Coins, Jam Bullion, and I've tried to do it by bank wire because that's one of the cheapest methods you can use to buy precious metals. But every time I've tried to use bank wire, I've had to. I have a business account with Chase. I have a bank wire option. I use the routing numbers and everything. As soon as I hit send on that thing, it's blocked. The entire account is shut down and I literally have to get in the car and physically drive down to the bank and authenticate who I am. Now, why is that? Well, I think I've told you before, I went into a Chase account and one of the reps there confided to me that his wife was a security expert and actually the security of the banks is so bad that uh, they just block every single wire as a uh, as a standard because it could be somebody who hacked into your account and if they hacked into your account and they send themselves cash and they take the cash and they run away then chase owes the money because they have to pay you back because it was fraud so that is how insecure our banking system is it's unbelievably insecure now this system on the other hand has actually been a free market system. It's live. Um, hackers are there. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the balance of my other Florin coin wallet, but hackers are there all the time and they want to steal that. And if they can hack into my computer, if they can put a, uh, a key logger, if they can break into my two factor authentication, if they can hack into my email accounts, they can steal my cryptocurrency. So, Again, this is the reason for taking a very long break from this technology, but I completely believe in this technology. I still believe in it. So let's get back to the market view of this coin and the reason why I think this coin is so important. So we'll go over to my Cripsy account. Um, this is just one of the exchanges that you can use to buy and sell these cryptocurrencies you can sell. Are, you can see that there's uh, a huge number of Litecoin markets. There's a huge number of Bitcoin markets. Uh, there's just a huge number of markets, period. And uh, let me see if I can get that image of the um, Florin coin. Uh, apparently lost that one. But uh, the chart of Florin coin... We'll go ahead and scroll up. I'll, I'll, I'll trust you guys and risk my um, florin balance on this one. So 
Sorry, I'm getting uh, pop-ups here. So we'll go ahead and scroll up. Now, most of my foreign balance is off of the exchange. But what I wanted to show you here is the chart pattern of this coin. Now, I went and revisited my Cripsy account. It had been offline for a very long time. In fact, it had been offline for over a year. And once I logged in, with which I had two-factor authentication, this was another account that was hacked. Uh, my donation account for Bitcoin Channel and Brother John Effer at Vikerx, which is another exchange, it was hacked. Basically, every exchange I've ever used, which is probably six or seven, was hacked. Um, every wallet I've ever used has been hacked. Uh, pretty much everything I've ever used has been hacked. Now, again, people will think, well, that's ridiculous. No, that's, that actually shows you the value of this technology. Uh, that hackers want it so bad and how lax security already is. And that was the point I was making that this technology is actually pushing, pushing security to a much higher level than it ever would have been um, in the free market because basically your Chase and all the rest of those banks, they're connected directly to the state. They don't have to have security. They get free money from the state. This, on the other hand, has to have real security, and that's what's being developed. So I wanted to show you this chart. Uh, this is Florin coin, and this is the uh, long-term chart. You can see it goes all the way back to September 2013 when the coin was initially uh, introduced. And you can see that the coin is under massive accumulation. Now, it wasn't until I logged into my Cripsy account I ended up selling maybe 20 or 30 or 40 different cryptocurrencies that I kind of made a bet on thinking they well, they might be something, they might add something. 99% were complete failures. I liquidated those coins. But this one coin that I bought actually um, performed, actually was a gain for me. And this is one I wanted to look at and, and this is why I've started accumulating this coin. Now, when I saw that volume come in, that's above 10 million, and I tried to find out the reason why, that's when I found Alexandria Project. Now, Alexandria Project is a project that takes advantage of this comment field. You see this transaction comment field? I can send this 100 coins back, and I can put anything I want into this transaction field. And then... I can take my address book, uh, that's my laptop, and I'll put this 100 in, and I'll click send. Yes. So you can see, I sent those coins, and it just showed up on my laptop. It showed up that fast. Now let's go back to the flooring coin uh, block explorer with the messages and the gibberish that I just typed in. And this is timing out a little bit, so we'll go back and try it again. Uh, so it's still on my last message. So we're going to see how long it takes for that to be confirmed. We'll come back. So let's get back to the main story here. And that is this, well, I had to close that, but that was the kick-ass torrents story. So if you think about torrents, th this is people sharing files between their computers. It's cutting out the middleman. If I have a file and you want the file, we share the file. Now, obviously, we could email it to each other. Uh, we could FTP it to each other. I could upload it to Mega Z over in New Zealand with uh, Kim.com, and then you could download it. But it's a, it's a lot easier to have a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network where these files can be shared. Well, what this coin does is this coin allows you to add these transaction comments. And with these transaction comments, the entire database of a torrent network can be stored. Okay, so there's my message. Now, that message could have been a torrent hash. In other words, a torrent location, a tracker that knows where all the files are that everybody wants to share. So let me wrap this up and put this in the, into the real world for you. 
Uh, let's say that that's the King James Bible that I am sharing. Uh, I don't know how many coin transactions it would be, uh, a certain amount, but I could take the King James Bible, I could put it in this blockchain by adding it as a message, send it to my other computer at no cost, and this would be forever preserved in this blockchain. That's the idea behind the Alexandria project. That's the idea that there can be a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized library of information that can never be del deleted by any authority because authorities don't have any control over this decentralized peer-to-peer -peer currency and message source. So hopefully I've explained that. Um, it's, it's, it's very deep, but it's also very interesting. This is why I've chosen Florin coin to accumulate. There's a lot of coins out there, but this coin I think is going to be one of the alternative cryptocurrencies that is going to be very important moving forward because this gives people the ability to communicate and store information in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network where the authorities can never shut it down without shutting down all electricity and all computers. And we'll talk to you next time.